Hey, three, two, one. This is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got Dr. Alan Leica on. How are you, doctor? I'm fantastic today, Brad. How are you? Wonderful. It's a beautiful day here in Minneapolis. And where are you? I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's a little gray and cloudy here, but it's everything's turning so green. It's going to be part of the beautiful green season. I love that. You know, I was nine miles away. I was at a, uh, doing a magic show up in Net Lake, Minnesota, which is about nine miles from the border. And I had never wow. stepped across. I've never been to Canada. You know, you should sometime. It's the kinder, gentler America that people always talk <laughs> about. I think it was one of your former presidents that said about that. We need a kinder, gentle America while it exists. It's called Canada. Come on up anytime. <laughs> but your younger generation can get kind of crazy. I used to do karate tournaments up in Duluth which is by Lake Superior, and they used to come down to the tournaments, and they're crazy. Well, do you know that our number one passion is hockey? And if you've ever seen a hockey game, you know, there's a funny saying about it. I was at a fight and a hockey game broke out. Well, that's basically what hockey's all about. It's, it's a, bait, a passion that, that has a lot of uh, shenanigans going on. Yep, 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 yep. I like Canada. I haven't been there, but I like the, like the vibe. The people are fun. So... Dr. Allen, I don't do these real long because people have that commodity of time. So we kind of condense it all into a, a digestible time window and uh, just like to learn more about. So you're in Canada. Are you married and got kids and things like that? I sure do. I have a beautiful wife. We've been married for 39 years. We have four wonderful daughters and seven wonderful grandchildren. They're probably my best accomplishments and I'm very <laughs> glad to have them. Best accomplishments you delegated to someone else. <laughs> well, the, you know, they're nice things. Uh, you could feed children full of sugar and send them home to their parents. So that's always exactly. a good thing. It's just a rental unit. <laughs> it's called revenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. How about fur babies? You know, not right now. I used to have a dog, but my youngest daughter moved away and took the dog with him, with her. So that, that I have a rental dog. When she comes over, I have my dog. So you, you got the... the the DR in front of that means you're a doctor. So what kind of doctor is that? I did a little research on you and uh, read a little bit of this stuff. For what? 30 years, I was one of the leading cosmetic dermatologists in the world. I, I trained at the University of Minnesota from 86 to 89. I then came back home to, to Edmonton and I practiced cosmetic dermatology and I became very good at it. You know, in the early days, there wasn't much of that. When I graduated, they had just invented something called Botox that has now taken the world by storm. They had a couple of primitive lasers that just had started. Now lasers have taken the world by storm. But you know, at every phase, I was at the beginning of it. And I, I literally became one of the best known as a result of it because I was a frontier leader. I was one of the four leaders in all that. Well, that's always a nice thing to have because you've kind of been through the trenches. If you're like the pioneer blazing the trail, you kind of understand it. So other people that kind of follow in your footsteps, you can kind of accelerate their learning because you've kind of been there and done that, right? Yes. And you know, when I was there, I read, wrote 17 books for my patients and my colleagues. I wrote over 30 uh, well-known papers and it really helped people to develop their practices. Um, I, I once wrote The Practice of Cosmetic Surgery, which was a book that I readily gave out to my colleagues so that they could follow in my footsteps. So not only was I a doctor, I was an educator. And I felt it, one of our greatest things we could do for mankind was to educate and to give back to them. And that's what I always tried to do. Well, again, uh, you know, if you've kind of already blaze the trail, so to speak, it's a lot easier for someone to learn from someone else's mistakes rather than getting the wounds themselves. So Yes, but you know, our, our egos in medicine are such, we always like to do a lot ourselves and a lot of people still strike out that way. And <laughs> uh, But a good thing is to learn from teachers. And I, I'm very fortunate that I, I stepped on the shoulders of giants to get to where I was. There were a lot of good people that helped me to become a consummate professional like I had become. Now, I was on your website and I saw a book on there. Is that your most recent book? It was, it was black and had some circles on it. And... 
yes, my, my current book is, I'm just gonna hold up a copy of it. It's called The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life. That's it. And I've, I've written it with my co-author, Harriet Tinka, and this began a passion of love four to five years ago. And I'd like to take you back a little bit and explain where that came from. Okay. In 2003, I was walking with my wife, Lucy, in Disney mm -hmm. World, and my wife turned to me and said, what's wrong with you, hun? It was the end of a hot, sticky day. It was very, very hot and humid. And, and my wife said this out of the blue, and I didn't know what she was talking about. You know, for once in my life, I hadn't said anything wrong. I hadn't done anything wrong. I hadn't even thunk anything wrong, Brad. So it was kind of, <laughs> kind of, kind of peculiar. So I asked her, what do you mean? And she said, listen to your foot. I said, what do you mean, listen to my foot? That's, again, something bizarre. So I did listen to my foot, and every step I was taking, my foot was slapping on the pavement. It literally wasn't doing what it was supposed to. Our brain is programmed for it to lift up with each step. My foot wasn't doing that. I had suddenly and mysteriously developed a right foot drop. My wife mm -hmm. turned to me and said, did you have a stroke? I said, no, dear, that's not how a stroke presents. And she said, and said, well, you know, when we get back, you better get this checked out. Well, Brad, when you're told that in that tone, you know you better listen. So I did as I was told. I had every test known to man. I had brain scans. I had cat scans. I had scan scans. And you know what they showed at the end of the day? Hmm? They showed absolutely nothing. The doctors were confused and perplexed. They thought I had a brain tumor. They thought I had uh, maybe a slip disc, but there was nothing on those tests. So I went and got more and more tests. I had tests that weren't even invented yet. And at the end of this billion dollar workup, I ended on the doorstep of a world renowned neurologist. And the neurologist said, come on in Dr. Leica, you better be sitting down when I tell you this. And I said, what do you mean sitting down? He said, you don't just have a foot drop, you have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Wow. And in six months, you're going to be dead. Get your affairs in order. Wow, I was taken aback. I said, is there a way to prove this diagnosis? He said, yes, on autopsy. <laughs> well, I shot back at him. I said, I'm not going to die to prove you wrong. But you know, when you go through something like this, you go through a grieving reaction. You go through anger. You go through denial. You go through bargaining. You go through depression. These are the steps that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross said a person goes through when they're dying. And that's what I was doing. I was dying. But you know, at the end of that, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross last step is acceptance. And I knew in my heart of hearts that I did not have ALS. So I asked my wife, what do I have? And she said, I don't know, but check it out. You'll figure it out. And, you know, back in 2003, we're a couple of years into this, but we had invented something called the internet. You might have heard of it, Brad. It was pretty <laughs> new back then. But, but back then, we were so primitive with it, we had to use dial-on connections a lot sure. of them. And we had to use a language called DOS to get on it because our computers had so little memory, we couldn't just write to them and let them know what's going on. We had to use what we had. And so with that, I had some computer nerds and they helped me. And I looked up every disease that looked like ALS, but was not ALS. And lo and behold, I found a doctor in Colorado Springs, Colorado, by the name of David Martz. He was a brilliant guy, but he had the same symptoms I had, but he got worse much more rapidly. And on his deathbed, many people were coming around to say goodbye to him. And a doctor came up from Texas and looked at David and said, David, there's something wrong with your picture. You do not have ALS. David whispered, what do I have? He said, you have something called chronic Lyme's disease. It's the bite of a tick. And that tick causes a disease that mimics ALS. Well, my goodness, I knew I had to get in touch with David because what happened to David was this. He started on treatment and like Lazarus, he arose from the dead. He literally got back to normal within one week of treatment. Wow. So I called David. I found him at the Methodist Hospital in Colorado Springs. A doctor can get in touch with any other doctor if he tries, just by introducing himself and getting in touch with people. So I got in touch with him. And you know, 
we talked for hours and he said, can you come down and see me? And I said, of course. He said, well, you know, I'm tr I've been treating 2000 people that have this mysterious disease. I, I think I can help you. I said, okay, when should I come down? He said, right now. I said, David, I can't, it's our Thanksgiving. My wife has just invited 50 people over. He said, well, aren't there any planes in Canada? So with that needling, I knew I had to get down. So I apologized to my wife, hopped on a plane from Edmonton to Denver and another plane from Denver to Colorado Springs. Now the flight from Denver to Colorado Springs is terrible. It's 15 minutes long, but there are eddies rising off the desert. So you go through the drop of doom <laughs> over and over and over, like 15 to 20 times in a 15 minute flight. But you know, at the end of all this, what happened is I crawled off the plane and there was David on the tarmac to meet me. Back then that was allowed. You know, there wasn't this high security stuff. There wasn't any of that. And he said, you don't look so good. And I said, I don't feel so good. He said, you know, this is probably an alleg allegory for what's going on in your life. You literally are living a, a roller coaster ride. And so we talked and he said, you know, Dr. Like, I think I can help you. And he started me on treatment. And so for 30 total years, I was one of the leading cosmetic dermatologists till I walked away last year. But you know, when you go through this, Brad, your life changes. You either yeah. go down the dark, evil path of being mean and angry and frustrated and biting off every head, or you learn a better way to live. You learn the secrets of living. And that's what I found and wrote in my book. That's why it's called The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life. It's based on 13 golden pearls that I found are important in everybody's life. And everybody can live a better life without the hardship I've gone through. And that's why I come to shows like yours to share and help people live that life. You know, at this time, people need so much more. We need so much more loving. We need so much more forgiveness. We need to escalate our lives to a higher plateau. And that's what I'm hoping I can do for people with my little book, my little contribution to mankind. Well, you know, that makes a lot of sense because when a person is in a certain situation, all of a sudden something dramatic happens, they, their thinking style changes totally. Like what's happened with this whole COVID thing. And I think I mentioned you, I was in the event industry. I'm still in the event industry. I was involved with the events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. But when the COVID thing happened, all that came to a screeching halt. So all of a sudden your brain has to start thinking, now what am I going to do? And you start coming up with new ideas. And um, I had a situation where I had a, a transient ischemic attack, which is like a mini stroke. Mm -hmm. And I had this situation where I was with a, a business partner and we were working really hard doing about 11 shows a year and work, work, work. And all of a sudden I had this little stroke and I had this aha realizing that I don't want to die in that office. So I resigned from that business. So we're doing really good. I resigned from it to be able to enjoy freedom because you never know when that last moment is going to happen. So you got to live life in the moment, right? You know, I think that's the most important thing. And, and I think it's also important to realize that you're in the driver's seat. It's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens. Yeah. That with COVID, yes, it's a terrible time. Yes, there's a lot of unemployment. But this is a time when you can reach a new high, you can reach a new, a new level, you can find other things to do. And although there's a lot of unemployment going around, I'm also enthralled by how many new jobs are coming around, new ways of doing things, new things that are really amazing that can help. Look at this technology where you were talking on, Brad. You're in Minnesota, here I am in Edmonton. I've been around the world by this technology, helping people, letting people know, well, this is amazing. I don't even have to leave and get on an airplane really to help people now. I can help thousands just from my own office, from my own house. Yeah, that's uh, one of the nice, th the, the good parts about something bad happening is your brain changes and starts thinking of other options. It's pretty, pretty nice. So your book, I'm assuming, has a lot of the situations that you have gone through. And uh, is this something that someone could read and learn? <laughs> 
Well, let me talk about one or two of the golden pearls for you. Okay. So that sure, you can sure. Understand them. You know, one of the basic golden pearls, I think, is gratitude, Brad. I think we should be grateful for everything we have, you know. We have roofs over our head, we have food, we have little, you know, we have so many things that we need to be grateful for. And I think everybody should show that gratefulness by giving back to others. And I challenge everybody out there to do something for their neighbor that they would not regularly do. Maybe they can go and just say a good, how do you do? Maybe they can go and bake some cookies for their neighbor. Maybe they can go and get their groceries from their neighbor who's been not locked in and couldn't get out because of COVID. Maybe they can go cut their lawn for them and do something that's nice for them. Maybe they just can help a handy hand and be helpful with that because I think that's really, really important. Well, it gives I you a sense of purpose all of a sudden. I, I think that's what it's all about is purpose is what it's all about. And we have a chapter on purpose too, so that people can understand what their purpose in life will be and even refine their purpose and understand that. So each one of our chapters has a signature story in it that leads it off. And then that signature is followed by a dialogue between me and my co-author. My co-author Harriet also had a devastating experience. You'd like, you probably would like to have her on your show yourself because her experience is so different, is similar and it touches on different things. And finally, we have a lot of quotations from many of the world's authorities that helps to carry you further into that because we love people to be able to share and know exactly what's going on. With that, I'd like to take you into my favorite pearl. It's called enthusiasm. Can I tell you the little story? It'll take about two minutes. Okay, let's do that. Okay. There was a man by the name of Fred. He was a carpenter. He had worked for the same company for 35 years, but he was tired. He had lost his enthusiasm. He knew it was time to quit. So he went to his boss and he gave his keys to the boss and said, I'm done. I just can't do any more. The boss was taken aback. This was his master carpenter. He was the guy that helped with all the houses that he had built over the year. So the boss begged him, please, Fred, could you do something for me? One little thing? Fred said, of course, boss. I've liked it here. You've been good to me, and I want to give return that. And the boss said, okay, just build me one more house. Just one more. Only you can do this. You're my master carpenter. So Fred did the job but his heart was not into it. He worked about two hours a day, whereas in the old days he worked 18. He did shoddy workmanship. Then it passed inspection. Oh my God, it passed inspection. So he gave the keys to the boss. The boss said, well, thank you, Fred. Now I wanna gather everybody around. So he gathered everybody around. This is Fred's last day. He did so much more for me. I want to thank him for what he did. Fred, Here's the keys for the last house you built. I want you to live it and enjoy it with the same enthusiasm you showed me all the days of your life. Now, can you picture how different would that be if he showed the enthusiasm that he regularly did? So this is something you have to bring every day, Brad. You have to bring oh, yeah. enthusiasm. If you didn't bring enthusiasm to your magic acts, they wouldn't be very good. You have to be enthusiastic about it, otherwise it's a no-win situation. Well, like Tony Robbins talks about your state. So what he does, he gets into a state of excitement when he, before he hits the stage. And speaking of stages, you also do some speaking, don't you? Yes, I love to speak. And if anybody needs a speaker on the virtual stage or the real stage, I would love to be that man for you. I would love to be the person that helped you. I also do that together with my, my co-author, Harriet Tinka. And we talk about overcoming adversity as one of our topics. But we also have a lot of business topics for people that need that, like leadership and how to overcome this difficult time in people's lives. So if you're an individual or, or a, a business that needs help right now, check out my website. That's Dr. Ellen Laika, D-R-A-L-L-E-N, Laika, L-Y-C-K-A dot com. And we'll be able to get in touch with you and help you. But I'd like to give something to everybody out there for being part of this. I'd like to give them a golden pearl a week so they can take it and enhance their life. All they have to do is text me the word golden pearls the word pearls with an S on it, to 1-819-717-2515. That's 1-819-717-2515. Now, 
from that list. We'll never spam you. We'll never sell that list, but we will give you a golden pearl a week so we can make your life a better place. And this is something I'd love to do is make everybody's life a better place, Brad. Well, what I'm going to do with this video is I take it and I put it up into the universe and propagate it out on some websites. So if you could email me that phone number, I will sure. listen to it too. And I will, I will include that phone number in there with the directions. I will send it as website. soon as we're off the line right now. That sounds good. Well, that's what I'm going to do, Dr. Leica, is get this thing beamed up there and propagate it out. And uh, if you could do the same, that's where the synergy comes in. One plus one equals 11. Brad, I would believe, I'd love to do this. This new math is one plus one equals nine or one plus one equals 12 or 35. And I love this new math because it helps to carry things to another level. Right. It's not so digital anymore. Yeah. Well, doctor, appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to sign this one off and we'll put it in the can, so, they, so to speak. And I appreciate you taking the time. And if you have someone else that wants to do a little interview, you know how to get a hold of it. It's mysynergy.com. So Thank thanks, you. doctor. Thank you. Have a great. Bye for now.